What's up people, Craig Lopez here for Songwish and today we're going to be looking at how we can use a Remedy 2 to MIDI sample some drum grooves. So pretty much every drum plugin comes with its own inbuilt sequencer and its own inbuilt sequences. But using Remedy 2 to trigger grooves means that we can play multiple drum plugins at the same time. So right here, I'm actually using Remedy 2 to trigger four different drum plugins. Have a listen. Now first up, let me show you how I've got my project set up. Now you can see I've got an instance of Remedy 2 within my drum folder here. And because I'm going to be using Remedy 2 to trigger drums, I want to set it up with my drum pads. Now you don't need drum pads to be able to do this. You can just do all this with your mouse if you want to. But if you do have pads, let me show you how to set them up. The way I've set it up is to have my controller trigger these first 16 pads here. And to do that, you just click in the lower left hand corner of each pad. Now the note displayed here corresponds to the incoming MIDI note that these pads will respond to. So I've just set mine up so they correspond with the outgoing note of my pads. So you can see I've went from C3 through to D sharp 3 on the first row. And all the way up to D sharp 4 on the top row. Right now the pads don't have any MIDI samples on them. But just to check to make sure everything works. Just trigger your pads and you should see the pads within Remedy 2 light up as you hit them. You can then save this as a preset, which you can say I've done. And as an extra bonus in Cubase, I've just clicked up here and went to save as default preset. And what that means is that every time I load up a new instance of Remedy 2, it will automatically open up my drum pads preset. I also clicked on this cog and turned off internal sound because we're going to be working with drums today so having the MIDI notes playing within the internal engine is going to be a little bit off-putting. Now the next thing I've done is loaded up four instances of ReChannel. Now ReChannel works as a kind of conduit between Remedy 2 and your plugins and it allows you to filter out different MIDI channels as well as pitch those channels up and down on the fly. So now I'm just going to set up these ReChannels to receive the outgoing MIDI information from Remedy 2. So to do that in Cubase, you need to go to the Inspector channel. And under MIDI Input, select the Remedy 2 MIDI Output. Set your channel to Any. And make sure you have Monitor On, Switched On. I'll just repeat that process. For all of my rechannel instances. Right, so now all that's set up, we're pretty much good to go and have a little bit of fun. Now we need some MIDI files, and there are thousands of places where you can get them from online, but today we're going to be using Loop Cloud. I'm going to scroll over to it, click on Format, go to MIDI. And under Instruments, I'm going to go to Drum. So to get them from Loop Cloud into Remedy 2, you just click and drag. Okay, so now I'm going to need some kind of drum plugin to play the MIDI 3. So let's start off with this 909 clone. So let's label the channel. And make it red. Because as we all know, drums are always red. And I'm going to take the MIDI input from my first re-channel. Make sure I have monitor enable and go back into Remedy 2. And now if I hit a pad on my controller, we can hear that MIDI file being played. So I'm just going to grab a couple more. Let's just go with the first four and let's have a listen. Okay, so that's obviously very cool, but let's take things a step further. So I'm going to grab another drum instrument, this time an acoustic kit. 
And this one, I'm going to take the input from my second rechannel output. Make sure we have monitor enabled. And let's have a listen. So even though that is the same MIDI file trigger in the acoustic kit as was triggering the 909, you can hear we have a different drum sounds playing, and that's just because different drum plugins are mapped differently, which can lead to some very interesting results. Let's open it up and have a look. I'm just going to solo the snare, and maybe let's solo the ride as well. Bring down the volume on the overheads and the rooms. Right, so we're really starting to build things up now, but let's go with another drum plugin. This time I'm going to go with Groove Agent and with the percussion kit, and I'm going to route that through my third rechannel. And let's have a listen to that now. Sounded good, but let's go into the rechannel that is triggering that percussion. And let's see what happens if we play about with transposing the outgoing MIDI from this. Try going up by five. Let's have a listen. Okay, so I'm really liking that, but let's take things one step further and let's duplicate that percussion channel. This time, let's take the input from my final reach channel. Let's try transposing this one down a bit. Now, of course, things can start to get very busy very quickly when we're layering drums like this, but this is MIDI and we have full control over everything, so we can just start muting individual parts. Until we get something that we're happy with. Okay, so I'm going to leave it there for now. Now, today I really have just scratched the surface on what could be possible when MIDI sampling drums within Remedy 2, but hopefully I've got your creative juices flowing and got you thinking about how you can use this in your own productions. Now, if you like what you saw today, make sure to hit that like, comment, subscribe button, all that kind of thing to keep up to date on all things Songwish. But anyway, that's it for now. I've been Craig Lopez. This has been Songwish. Now go make some music. Peace.